You always see those medical TV shows like Grey's Anatomy where everyone looks like a badass and comes in to save the day. They always know what to do and bring the patient back from sure death and they seem to just always have the answers and everything comes so easy to them. And you watch this stuff and you feel like you want to be that doctor one day, you want to be that badass surgeon and you definitely can be. So you work and you work and you work and you get into medical school and you're well on your way to achieving these grandiose goals. And that's when you can start to feel what they call imposter syndrome. See, getting into medical school is a very difficult thing to do, statistically and in reality. So if you've gotten this far, you should definitely be proud of yourself. Once you get in, however, it's easy to compare yourself to other people around you and you also realize that you're once again at the bottom of the hierarchy when it comes to medicine. You know nothing and you won't feel like you know anything for a long time. And to top it all off, you can't really show that. And that's the problem we're trying to fix. You should be able to show that and you should be able to talk about it. But as of right now, it's definitely frowned upon. As you meet more and more classmates, you start to hear about all the incredible things they did before medical school or even as a means to get into medical school. You try and smile and congratulate them, but that type A in everyone just seems to come out. You can't help but compare and feel like you're less than them. These people accomplish things in athletics and research and mission trips and God knows what, and it can leave you feeling like you just got lucky to be here. It feels like you don't truly deserve to be there and that they'll just pull the rug from under you and tell you that they made a mistake letting you in. This can definitely lead to feelings of anxiety and feeling like you don't belong. When it comes to the stuff you're learning, it can also seem like it comes so easy to everyone else and they seem to remember things from weeks ago while you struggle to remember the fact that we have two kidneys. And also, there's very little direct clinical experience in the first two years, so you can feel quite removed from being a doctor one day. The more you learn, you realize the less you know. And you try and imagine yourself with a patient's life in your hands and it's a scary thought knowing that you wouldn't know anything in that situation or how to save that patient as of this moment. And because no one else shows that they're struggling, you can start to feel like you're alone. And you're the only one going through this. And if this sounds like the story of your medical school life, it should go to show you that you're definitely not alone. All medical students and healthcare professionals feel this way at one point or another, and even well into their careers. And it makes sense if you really think about it, as a doctor you have somebody's life in your hands. And we all seem to forget, especially society in general, that doctors are people too. They've done stupid things in their past, they've made mistakes, they'll continue to do that because that's just part of human nature. And it can make you start questioning yourself as you think about your past failures and whatever you're struggling with now and you start to think, how am I going to be a doctor? How do I deserve to be a doctor if I'm not as good as these other people. And like we've mentioned in a previous podcast and video, we have lecturers 20 years into their career telling us that they still feel this way today. So believe me when I tell you there's nothing wrong with you for feeling this way. Now as far as dealing with imposter syndrome, there's a few different things you can do. The first thing, like we said, we need to normalize the fact that every medical student has their own struggles and it's okay to talk about them. It can be tough to find people that you trust and like in medical school in such a highly competitive environment, but if you're lucky enough to make a few close friends, share these feelings with them. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, call your old friends from back home or your family, or you can get professional help from your school or an outside source. There's online professional help these days. Talking these things out can help to make you feel like you're not alone, which like we said, you're obviously not. You'll be surprised to hear that your close friends in medical school that might seem the most put together and know what they're doing, they feel these exact things as well. And the sooner everyone starts talking about it, the sooner we can fix the root problem. The second thing is to seek mentors. As we mentioned, we have lecturers well into their career still feeling this way, which goes to show that they felt these things, dealt with them, and then continue to deal with them. So it's important to seek attendings and residents and upper year students as mentors and seek their expertise on how they dealt with these things and how see how they can help you to address these problems. The next thing is to have realistic expectations. No one is the well perfectly put together version of themselves that they try to present. Everyone has their own problems and struggles 
So stop trying to be this perfect person that doesn't exist. No one is expecting you to perform an emergency trach as a first year medical student. So take a breath and calm down. Do the best you can, keep learning, keep giving it your full effort and just understand that feeling like you don't know anything is just part of the process and you only feel that way because you care and that's a great thing. Do the best you can and keep it moving. Things are gonna come together sooner than later. The next thing is to use it as motivation. Stress and a little bit of anxiety can be a good thing if they're used the right way. You can allow these feelings to motivate you to work a little harder and put in a little more effort that you have left in the tank that you weren't deploying earlier. This doesn't mean to overextend yourself and burn yourself out. It's just about trying to make the best out of a bad situation. We look at stress and anxiety as a bad thing and they certainly can be, but if you use them to your advantage, it'll turn out well for you. And last but not least, it's important to be patient. Remember, medicine is truly lifelong learning. There's a reason it takes so long to become an attending physician and the need to continue learning doesn't end there. So take it all in and just go one day at a time, trusting that it'll all come together as long as you put in the effort. Remember to enjoy the journey because this is what you're gonna look back at one day and laugh about and smile about as hard as that might be to believe right now. So all in all, just remember that imposter syndrome is a very common thing among medical students as well as physicians, and you're definitely not alone in going through it. We hope that the advice today helps you in dealing with it, and as always, feel free to reach out to us, comment, email, whatever you want, and we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can.